Come, come, whoever you are, to Meg's Magical Mansion, a virtual guest house for spiritual wayfarers, a place where the ordinary becomes magical, where wisdom is yours for the asking, where your higher nature is just a wish away. And today at Meg's Magical Mansion, we're going to have some fun creating Beltane crafts. And as we're doing our crafts and getting ready for Beltane, maybe I'll tell you some fun facts and we'll pick up a little information about this wonderful and fiery holiday on the Pagan Wheel of the Year. And I got my crafting ideas today from one of my favorite YouTube channels, Magical Crafting. And I'll link down below in the description her episode if you want to check out how she did these crafts. To be honest, mine turned out completely different from hers. But I do enjoy her channel, and if you like witchcraft and crafting, this channel would be for you. Let's take a look at today's projects. First, we are going to make this adorable tabletop maypole. Next, we're going to make this beautiful Beltane door wreath. And we're going to make this cute little mini wreath that you could put on your altar. Let's get started. First, we're going to make a tabletop maypole. Here are some things I like to do before I get started. First, I like to set my intentions for what I'm going to be doing. Here I'm using a cedar wand that I made from some locally grown cedar trees and I'm just doing a little smoke cleansing and getting my mood in place and my intentions set. I've got to pour myself a little cup of tea. Don't you love my new teapot? It's so adorable! And maybe light a candle. I like to be in a really mellow uh, mood. I like to really connect with what I'm doing when I'm crafting. You're going to need a glue gun, two styrofoam balls, a dowel, some kind of a flat discs. This is one I found at the craft store. A bunch of thin satin ribbons. And I just had these sparkly beads. I found these cute little mushrooms at the craft store, some flowers, and the moss. You'll need glue sticks and, of course, some paint. And a lot of the stuff I just had around the house, so I just rummaged up what I had. And first thing you're going to do is cut one of those two styrofoam balls in half and that's going to make the base for your maypole to sit in. It's going to get glued right in the center there after we paint it. And I'm going to use my little pointy tweezers to make a hole right in the middle where the dowel can fit in there. That's going to help the maypole stand up straight without flopping all over. Next up, we're going to paint everything green just in case anything shows through the moss and all the stuff. The pole will definitely be showing, so we want that to be green. Oh, that's good. So next, we'll just paint all this stuff green. So if you're not aware, Beltane is the pagan festival on the Wheel of the Year that is the midpoint between the spring equinox, Ostara, and Letha, which is the summer solstice. It's the beginning of summer. It falls on May 1st, also called May Day, and it's been celebrated in Ireland and Scotland for centuries. The maypole is a big symbol of Beltane, and if you didn't check out last year's episode on Beltane, I will link it at the end of this episode to give you a little bit more information on that. But it is a symbol of fertility. Next, we're going to cut the satin ribbon in lengths that are as long as our 12-inch dowel. This dowel, by the way, is uh, half an inch by 12 inches. So just cut whatever kind of pretty colors of ribbon you like and as much or as little as you want. It's kind of up to you. A large part of Beltane can involve dancing around the maypole and that's one of the reasons we're making this little maypole today. Two of the main elements of Beltane are fire and flowers. Of course, 
Beltane refers to the fires of Bel, which is a reference to the Celtic sun deity, Belenus. And of course, the tradition of things like bonfires, oftentimes two bonfires would be built and all the cattle would have to parade between the two bonfires to keep them free of infection all year long. Or the tradition of the wicker man, where a man would be built out of straw and wicker and twigs and burnt in a symbolic way at sunset. But it is famously known as a fire festival and a flower festival because flowers are worn in the hair, flower wreaths on the door, and that again has a lot to do with some of the crafts we're doing today. Next, I'm going to use these sharp tweezers, and I'm going to make a small opening at the base of this styrofoam sphere. So I have a space to put the dowel in, and that's how we're going to connect the topper. And once it fits nicely, you can just add a little bit of a hot glue to make sure it stays in place. You know, another great tradition for Beltane is the giving of May baskets, where you can fill baskets full of goodies and take those out and give them to the needy. Next, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue gun all these little strips of ribbon up at the top here hanging down from the top of the maypole. You can do them in any kind of color combinations or patterns you want. I'm kind of overlapping them a little bit and I'm just hot glue gunning them in ways that look cute to me. I love crafting. There's just no right or wrong. Now I'm just going to use the hot glue to start covering this styrofoam ball with some of this moss. Keep your ribbons out of the way there, you don't want to get hot glue on them. But I'm just going to take the moss and start sticking it on there and covering this to make it look like a little topiary. By the way, this moss is dyed so when you're working with it just be aware that it's going to get the color green on your hands and maybe your work surface so just just be aware that it is dyed and the dye does come off a little bit while you're working with it Now I'm going to glue this together. So we're going to take the half circle, half of a sphere that we made, and we're going to hot glue gun that onto this disc. Right in the middle. Next, we're going to work on 
covering this with moss but let me check and make sure that's going to stand up in there looks good so now we're going to work on covering this with moss And now I'm just going to add the little mushrooms and little flowers and all these little gemstones and other decorations wherever I think they look good. This is the season when it's great to communicate or be able to feel the influence of all those creatures of the Fae, the world of the Fae, so I'm kind of thinking of that while I'm making this. Something that I think would make the fairies happy. Also a good time for just communing with the elves, all kinds of creatures of the forest. So I'm trying to get that vibe going here. Then I'm just going to put a little hot glue gun right here in the hole I've already made and stand the dowel in there and assemble my maypole. Ta-da! Then I'm just going to add some flowers up here on the topiary part at the top and just stick them wherever they look nice. Now I'm just going to tie a bow up here at the top all around where I glued down the ribbons and make a pretty little bow. And here you have my tabletop maypole, great to put on your altar or wherever you want to help you decorate for Beltane. Our next craft is a Beltane door wreath. And I'm just using a grapevine wreath that I got at the craft store. We're going to make a big one and we're going to make a little baby one. We're using pretty much all of the same things as the maypole with the addition of these amethysts. And I got these at the craft store. They were already pre-drilled with holes. So I was just able to attach the chains. And, you know, I just kind of want to figure out 
what order do I want to hang them in? Because they're different lengths, I want them to look, you know, a little bit uneven. I think that looks pretty good. So that's where they're going to end up. But before we get to that, we're going to put some moss on this wreath. Let's get going with that hot glue gun. One of Beltane's main characters is the Green Man. And the Green Man is a symbol of rebirth. He's also sometimes called the Jack in the Green. And he represents the cycle of new growth, the keeper of the forests and woods. And he's kind of even morphed into other mythological characters of the British Isles, like the Green Knight and Robin Hood definitely see their origins in the green man if you see him his image on buildings all over the british isles churches and cathedrals it's a face covered by leaves and foliage and he's a symbol found everywhere at beltane as he is sort of the keeper of merriment magic and mischief almost a puck-like figure for beltane Next, I'm going to use some jewelry wire to attach the chains up here at the top of the wreath. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more moss coming up here, covering up where they're attached at the top. Then we're just going to add flowers and jewels and mushrooms and whatever else strikes you fancy and makes your wreath look cute and foresty. Make sure you clear off all those little bits and strands of uh, glue from the glue stick. Sometimes you just have to go over it and pick all those little bits off. And then we're going to make a nice bow to put up at the top of our wreath. and the bow gets hot glued into place. And this is wire edged ribbon, so I can use my fingers just to crimp it up and make it look really cute. And there you have a beautiful, Beltane door wreath. Perfect 
was your welcoming the very beginning of summer. And now let's make a little baby mini wreath. I'm going to use these three crystals on this wreath. I have a clear quartz, a rose, and an amethyst crystal. Since I am clearly finding it very relaxing to hot glue gun moss, we're going to do some more. I am going to turn this around and glue from the back side my three crystals into the wreath from the bottom so they're just sticking up. You can make them super straight or you can make them kind of crookedy, whatever you like. You know, interacting with the Fae is a big part of Beltane. If you didn't check out our episode on Fairy Magic, check that out. We had a lot of inf interesting information for you there. But here are some fun fairy facts for you while we're doing our crafts. Did you know that toadstools are an international symbol of fairy magic? When toadstools appear, you know that fairies or the fae have made their home nearby. Then I'm going to glue some moss on the back here just to hold them in place securely. And just add flowers and other pretty things and get this thing decorated up. Fairies love shiny things, old buttons, paper clips, and charms. But did you know that fairies do not like human money? Fairies have a talent for hearing your wishes. They, are, they travel to them across the wind to their little fairy ears. So be careful what you wish for, because fairies might just hear it and decide to grant your wish. Remember, fairies love gifts, and if you want to keep the fairy on your good side, you definitely want to make sure you leave gifts and offering for them, because if you offend them, they will play tricks on you and they will mess with you. Old legends say they even steal babies and replace them with changeling babies. And we'll just top it off with this nice little purple bow. And here we have this adorable tiny little Beltane mini wraith, perfect to put on an altar. And if you are looking for a movie to watch this Beltane, I have a recommendation for you. The Wicker Man, made in 1973. No, I'm not talking about the 2006 version with Nicolas Cage, don't bother. Go straight back to the original classic 1973 British folk horror film directed by Robin Hardy starring Edward Woodward a very very hot and naky Britt Eklund and of course one of my absolute favorites of all time in one of his greatest performances ever Christopher Lee you really want to check this whole movie out. It is the story of a police officer called to the island to find a missing girl who maybe isn't even missing. And somehow all the inhabitants on this tiny little island keep telling him a different story. And as he roams about the island, he sees they have abandoned Christianity and have a form of Celtic paganism going on. The score is great. It is a 90% four and a half star rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I cannot even explain the awesome and terrifying climax. But if you like British horror, if you like Christopher Lee, if you're celebrating Beltane, I highly recommend you get some popcorn and catch 1973's The Wicker Man. And in the words of Buddha, a thousand candles can be lit from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Thanks for joining us today for our special crafty Beltane episode. I hope you learned a few fun facts about Beltane and that everybody has a joyful and wonderful celebration. And we will see you back here next time at Meg's Magical Mansion.